every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. A very good evening to you. Welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Omotayo Alo. In our top stories tonight. to have you join us tonight down the news in full. More voices have continued calling on the federal government to prevail on the Nigerian Elective Regulatory Commission to suspend the 45 percent upward review of electricity tariffs. Trade union leaders led by their chairman have been visiting the vice president Yemi Oshimbaju to make their voices heard. Abiola Uluwali brings us details. The TUC is vowing to continually engage government until there is a slash in the electricity tariff. The recent 45% upward review in electricity tariff by National Electricity Regulatory Commission was greeted with protests by organized labor and civil rights organizations across the country. The Senate's call for the suspension of the electricity tariff is yet to be heeded by the National Electricity Regulatory Commission and emerging from a closed-door session with the Vice President, the President of the TUC, Boboye Babaka Gama, says they are in the villa to inform government about the hardship that comes with the new electricity tariff. We are calling on government to review this and make sure that it is open so that, if possible, they can even take the discourse and genkos to the stock exchange where Nigerians can queue in. Or tell them, look, provide your funds, provide the services. Nigerians are willing to pay. Nigerians are very good followers. If you give service, they will pay for the service. He maintains that the TUC will continue to engage with government with a bid to ensuring the tariffs are reversed. Where there's constructive engagement, we will definitely have a meeting point. The nationwide opera trailing the upward review of the electricity tariff, according to analysts, if not addressed, may on the long run affect the popularity of government, just as the infamous fuel subsidy remover did to the administration of former President Gunlock Jonathan from the presidential villa in Abuja, Abiola Uluoli, called TV News. Danish government has expressed readiness to support Nigeria in the area of agriculture and development and renewable energy. Denmark Minister of Foreign Affairs, Christine Jensen, made the disclosure after a closed-door meeting with Vice President Yemi Oshimajo on the plans of a country to establish an embassy in Abuja. It says Denmark is to partner with Nigeria to achieve economic diversification. And moving forward, the federal government says the Chinese government should partner with it to help in developing the tourism and cultural sector, just as it has been doing in infrastructure development. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed stated this while welcoming the Chinese ambassador to Nigeria on a visit to his office to expand bilateral relations. The Senate has been receiving some reports from the Ethics and Privileges Committee bordering on individual petitions. One of such petitions is seeking the suspension of Senator Kabiru Marafa, who is being accused of disparaging the Senate with interviews granted the press. Jamil Afebwa reports. As is the tradition, petitions are first taken at plenary. Several have been presented by the Ethics Committee, but the one standing out is the petition against Senator Kabiru Marafa, which is now being studied by the Senate. 
A one-week window was requested by the appropriation committee, which they got, and to finalize the committee's work with the MDAs. The chairman of the appropriation committee says the committee is ready and beginning to receive reports. Today will be the beginning of the submission of reports by the various subcommittees. I want to inform the Senate that the appropriation committee is ready, we are set Next on the other paper is a motion seeking to resuscitate alien industries in Nigeria to create alternative source to revenue to help Nigeria's economy in place of oil. Sponsored by 67 members, the need for industrial rebirth is being emphasized. Believes that the change being referred to cannot be achieved unless there is a deliberate state policy back with action back with action to change our economy from being dependent solely on oil exports to the one that is industrialized. In what is now seeming like Nigeria has no industrial direction, members are asking the federal government to immediately formulate policies with Nigeria's huge human and material capacities. If we have an economic policy that is 20 years long with smart, intelligent people, we can make a difference. I Manufacturing companies and Kano there is a decline by 70%. The manufacturing industry in Lagos states, there is a decline and close down by 40%. The manufacturing industry in Potakot River states, there is a decline by 60%. Nigeria has been blessed with industries that could have shot her up the ranks of most industrialized nations in the world. Today, all Nigerians are seeing are collapsed or collapsing structures. I am aware that the Libyan Iron and Steel Company, LISCO, was established in 1979, about the same time that Delta Steel Company, Alaja, was also established in Nigeria, in my central district. While LISCO that is the Libyan uh, uh, enterprise. He's still producing and exporting steel from his war-ravaged Libya. Some clans who purport to own some clans who purport to own DSC under the failed privatization exercise, they continue to spit on the grave of Delta State Company. I think uh, we cannot continue to overemphasize the importance of what's really driving the industrialization in our country. The great problem for us is issue of unemployment, and that is a major issue, especially the issue of youth. And so what we must do, uh, by the prayers, particularly that that concerns us, is the Committee on Industry, Privatization, and National Planning to, to meet and look at the failures of the past and see how uh, we can find solutions to them. All the prayers have been adopted and the motion referred to the committees on industry, privatization, national planning for legislative input. Jamil Afegwa, Core TV News, Abuja. The removal of the Speaker of the Kogi State House of Assembly by five members of the House is one of the issues bordering the House of Representatives as they resume plenary. Besides setting up a high-powered committee to look into the matter, the House also considered a motion seeking the investigation and fire incidents in Kano State. The report. A motion on the fire outbreak in a major Kano market that burnt and destroyed goods and property worth millions of naira have been making waves in the base plenary as the House resumes. Sponsoring the motion, member from Kano is asking the House to look into the remote causes of fire outbreak with a view to ascertaining the extent of damage. That the resultant effect of the fire incident rendered many families and traders out of business as their capital base was, was destroyed, convenes of the strong need for the federal government, Kano state government, as well as well-spirited individuals to, to come to the rescue of the victim affected by the fair inferno. By what mathematics can any elected speaker of the House of Assembly be impeached? The question has caused a heated debate when it was presented at the House that five members of Kogi State House of Assembly are impeaching the Speaker of the House. Members of the House of Assembly 
for Paul to remove a duly elected speaker. Ought not to be the kind of thing we should be witnessing 16 years after continuous democratic rule in Nigeria. It will not be the first time a lesser number of assembly members are removing a speaker from office, but severally, the issue has continued to receive dogged criticism. It has become the precedence in Kogi that every time the unconstitutional issues has been adopted in that state. And I believe, Mr. Speaker, this time around, a high-power delegation should be sent, which is in line with what I support, and that uh, this motion did not need too much debate. It's a question of constituting a high-power delegation to go there, see what has happened, and report this issue, this issue back to the House for us to take a proper action on it. Nigeria's democracy has gone from what we have called a nascent democracy to a fledgling democracy. And now, Mr. Speaker, sir, nobody has any qualification for Nigeria's democracy. They call it a democracy. Mr. Speaker, what's even astounding was that there, was no, there were no votes taken on the floor of the House of Kogi House of Assembly. Signatures were collected, some which were purportedly forged, and they amounted to 11. Nonetheless, they insisted that the speaker was impeached. Many are arguing that the act was not in line with the rules of law. My position and where I stood as it related to the Constitution and the rule of law was not in doubt. And the same way my voice was loud then, my voice is even going to be louder now where it affects my party. The House is resolving to send um, a delegation to Kogi State to address the issue the and forestall the National Assembly from taking over their responsibility. Pali Iriase is a special committee chairman. The trouble with Ali Modi Sharif seems not to be over as former ministers of the People's Democratic Party have joined the list of those calling for his resignation as national chairman of the party. The ex-ministers who made the call on Tuesday in Abuja during a meeting also fought at the manner in which Sharif emerged as PDP chairman. PDP's Board of Trustees had earlier rejected the appointment of the former Borono State Governor as the party's national chairman, saying that he was not a suitable leader for the party. Former Minister of Aviation Femi Fani Kayade is insisting that Alimadu Sharif must resign as the acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party. Fani Kayade said this on the sideline of the PDP Former Ministers Forum meeting in Abuja. The former ministers uh, held the closed door meeting to take a stand on the margins of Sharif as acting national chairman of the party. First of all, my first question is, who is he? Who is uh, Ali Modu Sharif? Is he a Nigerian or is he a Chadian or is he both? That's the first thing. The second thing is that you come in as national chairman or claim you're national chairman that you want to move a party forward and the first thing you do is start issuing threats, which I think is unacceptable and nobody's intimidated. The fact of the matter is this. He wants to set 
Nigeria on fire. He also wants to set the PDP on fire. And that fire will consume him and him alone. As regards his personal threats to me, I am more than ready for him. I'm waiting for him. And I assure him that unlike anybody that he has ever met before in his life, he will meet a resistance that he never banked on. I'm not intimidated. I cannot be intimidated. And I'll quote Shakespeare for you. In Macbeth, Macbeth himself said something, which I've always found very interesting. It's a beautiful line in Macbeth. He said, I shall fight until the flesh is hacked from my bones, and damn be he who first cries hold. Damn be he who first cries hold in this issue. We will remove him. We will ensure that he does not remain national chairman because he has divided this party. This meeting we're having today will take a decision. I won't preempt that decision. But once we've taken our decision, we will know what to do. And I sincerely hope that all the other stakeholders in this party recognize the fact that this man is divisive, he is unacceptable, he is unfit, and he's somebody that, you know, none of us have any respect for, and he cannot move our party forward. That's my response. We are going to have a meeting now. As you are aware, I'm chairman of the strategy committee of this particular meeting. We're meeting now, and the Foreign Minister's Forum several parts of this party will take a decision. I will be bound by the decision of my brothers and my sisters in this forum and we will move together forward. But I assure you that nobody can ignore us or treat us with contempt and we cannot be intimidated. The Afanifera Renewal Group has called on the federal government to create a platform that will enable each federating unit to grow at their pace. We'll take a quick break now, and when we return, we'll come back with more stories. Do stay with us. Are you aware that the death percentage attributed to Lassa fever cases is currently put at 43.2%, a figure considered very high? Lassa fever, an acute viral illness characterized by high fever, muscle aches, mouth ulcers, and bleeding in the skin, is harbored by rats and spread to humans via the urine and droppings of rats. To prevent Lassa fever, avoid any exposure with rodents, rats as well as food and objects contaminated with rat secretions and excretions. Report all suspected cases of Lassa fever immediately to the nearest healthcare institution. Help prevent Lassa fever. This message is from the federal government of Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, it's Core TV Primetime News. A quick reminder of our top stars. And for more of the news and information, do visit our social media platform, facebook.com forward slash core TV news, or Twitter at do at core TV news NG. You could get more on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash core TV, middle space, and news. The Afanifera Renewal Group has called on the federal government to create a platform that will enable each federating unit to grow at their pace. Chairman of the group Wally Oshun stated this while briefing journalists after a closed-door meeting with Vice President Yemi Oshimajo. It says allowing healthy competition among the federating units remains the panacea to further unlock the potentials of the country. And moving on, governments at all levels have been urged to make education a priority and a worthwhile investment in the Nigerian child. Speaking at a briefing organized by Obafemi Awolo Foundation in Lagos on Tuesday, Tokumbo Awolo Odusumu, who is the daughter of the late sage, reveals that plans to celebrate the posthumous birthday of Obafemi Awolo. Victoria Solomon was there and files in this report presented from our studios. Born 6th March 1909. 
Obafemia Wulowo. The first premier of western region of Nigeria would have been 107 years of age this year. He passed on May the 9th, 1987, but a foundation started in his memory plans on celebrating him nonetheless. A symposium tagged AWO, then and now. Politics, economics and education. And some sporting activities are among the lineup. The director um, Tokubok Awolowo Dosumu speaks on the thrust. A lot needs to be done to, to put things right. I think first of all, um, teacher training needs to be beefed up. Teacher morale needs to be enhanced. Uh, people have to be given the motivation to do the job. And provision of the basic tools with which knowledge would be um, imparted to the children has to be produced. Assistant Secretary to the Foundation, Lukman Salako, and Chairman Organizing Committee, Samuel Omolola, Shed more light. We approached the Dr. Dusumo to materialize the name of our legend, our father, Chief of Afemi Awolowo, for what he has done in the past so that our upcoming kids we know that as about him, we now know more, much better about him. That's why we approached her to introduce the kids' club to her and gladly she accepted. So we've organized the first one, the second edition, and this is the third edition we are in now. Today's event marks the uh, opening of the third edition of Chief Oba Femi Awolowo Kids Cup. And also the first edition of Mama HID Awolowo uh, Cup for female. Last year we started the female, but when this happened that our mama passed on, so we now shifted the female uh, glory to her. The symposium holds on March 3rd, 2016. Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB, has called on the federal government to increase its budgetary allocation. Felix Abali, Commissioner of AIB, made this appeal at the Aviation Stakeholders Workshop in Lagos on Tuesday, identifying funding as one of the challenges confronting it. The challenges we have with, in AIV from inception has been that of funding. We only received 3% of the 5% ticket sales charge. And so that doesn't work very, uh, very well for, with us in executing our functions as an accident investigation bureau. It is going to be based on the National Assembly with the help of the minister and uh, uh, maybe the president to work with the assembly to increase it because it's only through the act that the revenue allocation from that will be increased. As one of the six agencies under the, the Federal Ministry of Aviation, the AIB's responsibility is to investigate, recommend solutions for aviation stakeholders, and most importantly, prevent repetition of aviation hazards. And moving on, a uh, complaint rising from oil spews and environmental degradation in the oil producing communities are getting the attention of the National Human Rights Commission. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Bem Angwe, has been threatening to shut down oil companies that violate laws guarding oil exploration in the region. Angwe is ending down the warning at the inauguration of a six member special investigative panel set up by the Commission to investigate complaints of the communities. Almost a fortnight now since 12 vice chancellors of some Nigerian universities were relieved of their duties by President Muhammad Buhari. Now the Academic Staff Union of Universities is asking the federal government to allow the government councils of the universities to replace them with their preferred candidate. Bukola Afeni files in a report presented from our studio. Nasir Fage, president of the union, speaking with newsmen, says by the provision of the University's Amendment Act 2003, only the governing councils have bestowed the power to remove and appoint vice chancellors and is asking that the federal government follows due process laid down. Going by the provisions of the University Miscellaneous Provisions Amendment Act 2003, only the governing councils 
I bestows with powers of appointment and removal of vice chancellors. Comrade understanding of the issues involved is required. You may recall that way back in 2011, at the onset, there were official campaigns on how committed and experienced investors were going to inject needed funds to turn around the comatose power sector. And despite spirited efforts by patriotic Nigerians, particularly the labor movement, the ruling class forced the bitter pill down the throat of helpless workers and citizens. Three years down the line, provision of uninterrupted electricity has remained a mirage, and the story of the power sector has changed for the, for the worse. Nigerians now pay higher bills for less hours of brightness than they did in 2012 or earlier. Indeed, with the perfected fraud of estimated billing system, Nigerians in many instances are made to pay crazy bills for a prolonged regime of darkness. Asu is also saying that the Treasury's single account is incompatible with the autonomy of universities and is asking that government excludes it from its implementation. He says government should not borrow money to finance the 2016 budget, but rather plow recovered loot back into the economy, while also condemning the electricity tariff hike. Asu fully supports massive resistance by the labor movement and other patriotic Nigerians against moves by the National Electricity Regulatory Commission and the distribution companies to hike electricity tariffs in the country. Any pricing process that fails to consider the prevailing socioeconomic climate is bound to engender further hardship and worsen the living and working conditions of the mass of the people of this country. Like its other policies on privatization, we call on the federal government to reverse itself on the idea of selling the power sector to the highest bidder, whose primary interest is unbridled profit motive. The domination of private ownership of the electricity sector will jeopardize the economic development and national security of this country. The University of Utoke in Bayelsu State is among the 12 universities which had their vice chancellors appointed by former President Goodluck Jonathan and sacked by President Muhammadu Buhari. The Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, has vowed to explore every means to protect its members against the oppression of Oshun State government in view of the continued industrial action by doctors across government health institutions, describing the Arabe Shola-led administration as leading a genocide against its own people. The Southwest Caucus of the NMA says current struggle between doctors and the state government over the non-payment of salaries and obnoxious tax regime has exposed its empty people's stance. Rashid Rashid has more. The Southwest Caucus of the Nigeria Medical Association NMA says the continued failure of the state government to accede to the demands of the striking doctors is an indirect declaration of genocide against the people of the state who could not afford to pay the exorbitant bills demanded by private hospitals. There is a need for intervention of parties outside the state and especially the federal government to halt the genocide of the people of Oshun State by Ogbeni Rauf Aregbeshola and his courts. In truth, the hospitals around the state have been non-functional with patients resulting to private hospitals, both legal and illegal. The resulting effects of this include an increase in quackery across the state, increased maternal mortality, infant mortality, and other forms of mortalities as a result of the intentional neglect of the state secondary and tertiary institutions by the government of Ogbeni Raouf Aregbeshola. Though the doctors in the state are a minute percentage of the workforce, they have remained the only standing group to say no to the impunity of Mr. Governor and to the lies being peddled by the government in order to hoard state resources for private use and deprive the people. They also accuse the government of insincerity. Presently, the, if you put the population of Oshun State to about 5 million uh, people and you have about 100 doctors, even less than 100, they want to make it up for him to make it 100. That's a ratio of about 1 to 50,000 people, one doctor to 50,000 people. And when internal recommended standard is less than one to 600, then you can see what people of Oshun State have been suffering. 
So if you now choose at this point in time that is claiming austerity that I cannot pay salary, you want to recruit. So it's a welcome development. So they will add to our food eventually when it comes back to his senses to do what is appropriate. You should listen to the doctors and know that not everybody in Oshun State will be able to afford taking their, their relatives or even themselves out of Oshun State to go and take, um, attend to Medicare. I, I think that the government, and we all know that the government is responsible for the people. And if they are unable to do that, like the caucus chairperson has said, then they should seek for help. And if possible, you know, tender the res resignation. There is a mechanism in place by the, by the enemy. And we have the, what is called the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria that regulates doctors coming in and even their practice. It's not, uh, it's not something that you can just do, you know, by just you know, by wind and caprices of somebody's um, imagination. There are processes in place. And if it's going to put in a mechanism to bring in doctors, you know, from, from outside that would come thinking that they would take the place of our doctors here, that really cannot work. The body sounded a note of warning should government attempt to take any unacceptable steps. We will want His Excellency Obeni Rauf Aregbashala to note that should he actually implement the threat to sack the doctors in Ocean State, all of us in the Southwest, we will mobilize ourselves. We will pick his office in, in, in Oshogo and we will make sure that he's unable to govern in the state. He cannot, he dares not sack our doctors. With this new support for the striking assisted doctors, no one can tell if there is any end in sight. Rashid Rashid, Court TV News. Nigerian nurses have been urged to show care, especially as patients have to also grapple with economic challenges. Wife of the Lagos State Governor Bolan Liambodi may have a charge at the 8th Annual Nurses Scientific Conference on Tuesday while saluting the nurses for effortlessly providing health care services through the years. Aki Obakaye has more. <laughs> Nursing has come a long way in Nigeria's healthcare delivery. Nurses come across all, all, all strata of the society. And we believe that nurses have a key role to play in terms of counseling them, in terms of caregiving, in terms of putting enlightenment across for people to really be able to know. And although economic challenges faces the healthcare provider, he is still expected to hide his pain and cater to the need of patients. These sacrifices do not go unnoticed. However, as the First Lady of Lagos State, Bolanli Ambade, sees the opportunity presented at this year's Health Service Commission Nurses Conference to encourage them, she emphasizes on showing compassion to indigent Nigerians with health issues. This is in, in the Lagos State Public Service, indisputably the largest in the country, have held their shoulders high, having constantly distributed themselves in the practice over the years. In all departments of nursing, psychiatry, midwifery, or any other, they have excelled to the pride of the state and continuous improvement of healthcare delivery in the metropolis as well as the rural areas of the state. Younger nurses were equally welcomed into the noble profession. The nurses themselves to be more educated so that they will see the reason why the nurses are brought are being recognized and why they are not being recognized. You know, recognition is not about sitting down, demanding for it. You've got to be doing something special, something that will let people know that yes, here you are. The Nurses Conference will also, in the course of the week, honor outstanding Nigerians with various service awards. Akion Bakke, Court TV News, Lagos. Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria is ready to clamp down on fake laboratories in the country. The tax force says this became necessary since medical practice deepened, uh, depend heavily on the analysis of test results carried out at these labs to administer treatment to patients, arguing that fake results will mislead diagnosis, thereby endangering lives. And moving on, Lagos State Government, through the Ministry of Justice, 
has unveiled the plan for a forensic center to help it in identifying and for forensic analysis of criminals and disputed cases. Lagos State Commissioner for Justice Adeniji Kozim says the center is of world-class status that will provide evidence analyzing services for security purposes beyond the state. The laboratory will help in criminal investigations, domestic and sexual violence cases, family planning and paternity tests, identification of victims of natural and man-made disasters. And concerted, especially when it comes to using technology that makes investigation and prosecution and adjudication more effective. I am pleased to announce that the Lagos State Government, in furtherance of its commitment to criminal justice sector reform, has begun the process of establishing a state-owned DNA forensic laboratory. The Lagos State Ministry of Justice, with the active support of His Excellency Governor Akil Miyambode, will drive this initiative vigorously. The DNA Forensic Center will be called the Lagos State DNA Forensic Center, LSDFC, will fulfill an unmet need for DNA profiling, a forensic technique that is now used worldwide. The center will not only fulfill the growing DNA profiling needs of the judicial process, but could also become a revenue generating center for the state by serving the public, other states and neighboring countries. Taraba State House of Assembly have been deliberating on the state's 2016 budget, with ministries, departments and agencies appearing before relevant committees in the House to their budgetary estimate. Both the ministries of Environment and State and Local Government Auditor General have been answering questions about their proposals. Udwa Godwin reports. Appearing first, officials from the Ministry of Environment came to the Committee on Environment highlighting the ministry's projected revenue profile of 290 million naira. Carry out the appropriation program. This is very necessary because the uncontrolled rate of exploitation, which has led to the drop in the standing quarter of 35 percent. If this is not checked, the high rate of exploitation will lead to soil erosion, flooding, droughts, that diversification and global climate change. The above situation can only be checked by establishment of mobile courts to check the illegal forestry activities, provision of patrol vehicles with the monitoring team to control these illegal activities. The committee members explained the need for the ministry to intensify efforts at generating revenue as it has seen the need to review the proposal. Do you mean it's only or one and a half truck that is exported out of Caraba daily, every day. Oh, and we have so many exits. We have the Kaku exit, we have the Kurmi exit, or the Kurmi and Kaku, they are maybe the same. Then the exit here, or up north here. We have three months to run out. Sitting before the Public Accounts Committee, next is the State and Local Government Auditor General, whose office is saddled with the responsibility of examining all books of accounts of the State Government for proper record skipping. Uh, I want to tell you that some of the MBAs, they have performed below expectation Because the level of generation in some of the MBAs, they are very, very economical with the truth. And this is due to lack of monitoring, I think, from officers in charge. And maybe the Board of Internal Revenue, who is supposed to be a supervisory body, has not taken its time to look at some sources of revenue from various ministries. Followed 
by the Board for Internal Revenue Generation is also being step up its game as the come before its committee so as to reduce over-dependence on federal allocation. So we quite appreciate the fact that if the health of the should make the law, go to most of these taxes, go, go to most of these uh, levies, reduce their power. Uh, we will be happy for it. And we quite support that idea. And ever since, over and over, we will be time without the law, we will be reducing the cost. The House is continuing with more MDAs appearing on subsequent legislative days. Udra Godwin, Core TV News, Chalingu. And on the foreign scene, the White House has presented to Congress a plan to close the Guantanamo Bay, Bay Detention Facility, one of the President's long-standing goals. It wants to transfer the remaining 91 detainees to their home countries or to U.S. military or civilian prisons. Or the U.S. Congress is deeply opposed to terror, Suspects, terror suspects being held on U.S. soil and is expected to block the move. The prison costs $445 million to operate. Annually, closing it was a 2009 promise from President Barack Obama. Furthermore, human rights campaigners have repeatedly complained about the prison in Cuba, which has held 780 detainees since it opened in 2002. And to the world of sport, the Lagos State Government, through the office of the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor in Sport, Anthony Adeboe, has unveiled plans by the State Government to discover more talent amongst youth of the state. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the inaugural Lagos on the 15th Secondary School Tennis Championship, the SSA Anthony Adeinka Adeboe says the intention is to organize several competitions across 10 different sports designed towards discovering new talented sportsmen and women for the state in particular and the country in general. Also speaking at the opening ceremony was the DG of the Lego State Sports Commission, Ayo Ade Agbesonwa, who commended the media for their support for all Lagos State Sports projects and affirmed the support of the Lego State Sports Commission for the Lofty project. Before we go tonight, a quick reminder of our top stars. And it's a wrap on Core TV Primetime News. Thank you so very much for joining us. I am Omotayo. Aloha.